What's up? This is Will. I am. I'm here in the area that I grew up in, Boyle Heights, in the school that my family went to. Now we have magnet program and an Esri GIS geographical information systems program. When I was transitioning from dreaming in the projects about having a career in music, I live right here on Figure Street behind the laundromat. Education was the spark that altered a course because we could have just ended up a statistic. I would like people from Boyle Heights to go to MIT, to Stanford. I met Jack Dangerman. Welcome to my family. You got a great family. He had this awesome technology. Type in like 90023 and you could ask this system anything. Like how many people voted that's been in jail um, that are diabetic? I was like, yo, type into the map how many drive-bys happened in the past five years. He was like, we don't have that information. I was like, exactly. Let's teach my kids how to create maps. That way they can input things that they see in the community. That was an idea. And gonna transform America. Started here at Roosevelt. Check it out. Geography is, for me, one of the most important social sciences there is. Without geography, we don't understand who we, who we are or where we come from. Science of wear is, is what I'm teaching students, to identify a problem or issue in their community, to collect data, visualize their data through maps, and then take action. The service learning project, it's a graduation requirement. The goal of the project is for you to be proud of your community, proud of your families, proud of your culture and heritage. It's completely different, this type of work that we do. Students are active in their own learning. So as a teacher, I am there as a coach, guiding them through the research process. Step one is the students have to pick a question or an area of research. So we're looking at the relationship between American gun culture and school shootings uh, following Columbine. Students are researching those issues that impact them. We all had in common a family member or someone close to us being incarcerated and we were really interested in researching that topic. Environmental issues, they're researching injustices in the educational system. So we decided to settle on the 1968 walkouts because it happened in our community. It's focusing on education back then and how that impacts our education now. And then the next step is actually research design. What are the data pieces that will begin to answer their question? The data that you need will be here somewhere. It may not be in a form that you recognize it, right? But you need to be able to work on those skills of like, what, what conclusions can I draw from this? Who are credible sources and who are going to be biased sources? I have family members who have been inside the facilities, so we got an interview from the family members, and that helped us with the regulations, with how they feel. We asked students to conduct an interview with two to three experts. Right from the get-go, we started to go around Cesar Chavez. We surveyed every individual business that we can find. So we had in total around 150 data points. It really challenges them to speak to professionals, to community organizers, right? And it puts them at the center of the work. After they collect the data is the mapping part. That's really challenging because it actually requires a lot of quantitative data and how to visualize it and how to actually get it to tell a story. Like putting different components on one map, it can really show like the relation between things that you wouldn't like, think of connecting. Like I wouldn't have thought of connecting population to school shootings. It's making learning that much more exciting. We're adding student stories to a map. We're adding our lives to a map. It could even be emotional for, for some people when they see themselves in a map. Yeah, crimes happen, but when mapped, like, it's like a whole different interpretation. Like, you see it and you're like, wow, like, I would have never thought this and that about my community. So I, I, I thought mapping was really changed the game for us. So as you might know here in Boyle Heights, we are more likely to have powder cocaine to heroin. Pretty sure you guys have seen it all around in your neighborhood. Now it's, how do we make sense of all this? Was our hypothesis true or false? Why or why not? The students present to students and to a panel of teachers. I 
at the end of the year, the kids culminate with a trip to Esri where they present their findings to the company of GIS professionals. As an English teacher, you're teaching students the basics of argument. So when the students are able to collect data and visualize it, they're really empowered to advocate for changes. Thank you. They can show a series of maps to people in government offices. We began to use that hashtag, Maptivist. What our team is doing is creating some sort of merchants association. We just want the community to be better and hopefully implement a business improvement district by the end of this summer. At the end of the day, you're right. Like a bunch of teenagers probably can't fix all the world's problems, but knowing that they're all gonna go and be educated and assume these positions of power where they can really advocate for their communities is a great, goal. I would advocate for teachers to engage in really thoughtful and meaningful education and that's what I think our project is about. I feel like it's a much deeper lesson than just research. It shows them too that there's there's so much humanity loving your community and loving each other in order to, to find these solutions.